I'm not used to being up here. Um, I feel like what I have to say now ought to be wiser than it actually is, but. So, um, uh, my wife Lori was raised on a farm, uh, mostly raised on a farm. Uh, I was raised in suburban Toronto. I just hold on to that because you're going to need that later. Um, and everything that you just immediately assumed about what I just said. The thing is, uh, Lori grew up on a farm, and the family farm is just west of Bashaw. Some of you are probably familiar with Miller Wilson Angus because uh, Lori's sister Dawn now runs the farm. And um, the, the house, the family homestead, um, which is, uh, was quite aged, uh, it had lived its life and uh, it was not really repairable, it had to go in, so Don and Lee built a new house. And when I say they built a new house, Don and Lee and their son Ty built a new house, they did it themselves. And they designed it themselves, they built it themselves, they did pretty much everything themselves, because they can do stuff like that. Um, and the kitchen is what I'm most interested in, and I know you're looking at me and thinking, yes, we can tell that, Robin, you obviously like the kitchen. But <laughs> Their kitchen is the biggest kitchen you've ever seen in your life. How big is it? It's so big, it has couches. Big couches, two of them. And this huge big table in the middle of the room, obviously with chairs, or it might even be a bench, but I think it's chairs around it. Um, but couches in their kitchen. I don't think it's because they get bored cooking. Uh, I, it's because, obviously, when you invite people over, where do they usually end up? Yeah, why do they end up there? It's because you weren't ready. That's why they end up there. <laughs> but it isn't always, is it? It's, it's sometimes people end up in the kitchen because that's where the action is. Because that's, I know, I know you're tired of me hearing this, but the United Church is definitely the church of food. We, we rarely do anything where we don't have at least coffee and some cookies or muffins or something. And we love meals. We love them a lot. But why? See, I think it's because, I think it's because there are not enough. In fact, there were so many stories of Jesus talking to people over food, they decided to leave some of them out of the Bible. Because I think Jesus realized how important it was to gather people around a table, around that one thing that we all have in common, whether you like it or not, food, and have conversation. That's how it works. So Don and Lee built this kitchen that, that, that has couches because that's where people are. And they, they like preparing food together. They like doing all of that kind of stuff together, and they have conversation while they're doing it. Um, they, like to, they like to have casual conversation while they're, they're eating. And, and I, think, I think it's an amazing idea. And it makes me wonder why kitchens are so small generally. Because we always, always end up there. And, and if, you're, if you have a galley kitchen even, for instance, I mean, can you fit more than one person in there? You can't. Because you focused on the utility. Sorry, not you. The builder focused on the utility. It's the kitchen. The kitchen in our house actually isn't, isn't very big, um, but we, we kind of redid it when we first moved in, and it has a counter that's got like a little L shape that's got a couple of uh, stools at one end because uh, Lori insisted that since she doesn't really cook, she would sit and watch me cook <laughs> while she had a glass of wine. Ask me how many times she's actually done that. Once, literally once, literally once, because we just don't do that. But Don and Lee, they have, they have people in their kitchen all the time, and they want them to be comfortable, and they want, they want them to be comfortable there, comfortable there, blah, blah, comfortable there, not just so they can sit and watch them do stuff, but so they can have conversation, because that's where that happens. I think it's a, that's an awesome idea, so everybody go and rebuild your kitchen so they're bigger. The thing is, we don't often do that, right? You invite people over, and they sit in the living room, and if you've planned ahead and you've prepared everything, you can sit with them and have conversation, but invariably, somebody ends up in the kitchen doing stuff while your guests are sitting in the living room. Unless they follow you into the kitchen, of course. 
because we don't always get stuff ready ahead of time, and sometimes it's not always possible to do that. So we end up with people that we just invited over, sitting in the living room, talking amongst themselves while we're in the kitchen. See, I want to say that's the, the Mary and Martha story, except that you know as well as I do that the odds of Mary and Martha having a separate kitchen from the rest of their living space are probably remote. So you know that, that she was off in the kitchen doing the work while her sister was, and she could see her sitting there doing nothing while she did all the work. Because that's how we tell the story. We tell the story, here's the good sister, and you can tell by now because I haven't said their names that I've forgotten which one's which, right? Because we do. Which one's the one that works? It's a test. Come on. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> She's doing all the work. And the other one's just, that's how we tell the story. She's doing all the work. The other one's just sitting there doing nothing. Might as well be a teenager. They could be. Who really knows? It doesn't say in the story. But that, that is how we tell the story. We, we eat, despite the fact that Jesus then says no, she's doing the right thing. We often tell the story as no, she's not. In fact, our feelings are probably hurt because we're a worker. We're a doer. Are you a doer? If you're a doer, you're usually hurt by this story. Because it sounds like being the doer isn't the good thing. So forget all that for a minute. <laughs> because that's not the point of the story. I don't think. I honestly don't. I know I just said forget all that for just a minute because I'm going to talk about it now again because you could probably forget about it for just a minute but not more than a minute. Because that's our culture. Our, our culture is that doers are better because you want to be somebody who does stuff. You don't want to be the person who sits around and doesn't do anything. That's lazy. Except, except she's not being lazy. She's learning. Oh, okay, so that's like one step better, but not much better. Do you see these, do you see these memes sometimes? On, I know everybody's on Facebook. Um, do you see these memes sometimes where, and you, or you might have seen this somewhere else, where they have a picture of somebody who's clearly somebody who works in a trade or a laborer, and somebody uh, who looks like um, a stereotypical university student or a business person. And the one side it says this person spent $5,000 on their education um, and now they have a career that set them up for life and they make $85,000 a year. And this side it says they spent $10,000, uh, they're now in debt for $10,000 or more and they spent eight years getting two university degrees and they serve fries. Have you seen those? I guarantee you they're posted by people who are working trades or labor because they feel badly somehow that somehow this other thing is considered superior. But, but it's not, is the thing. One is not superior to the other. They are what you do. Some people, some people some people sit and listen and learn. Some people learn by experience and by doing. We know that. It took us about 18 centuries to learn that, but we know that. I'm, I'm an experiential learner. I like to learn by doing. Ask me if I can build anything, because I can't. I'm, I am absolutely 100% envious of Don and Lee and Ty because they can build stuff. I'm useless. I'm lucky to figure out which is the right end of a hammer. I can cook, though, and Lori, it is seriously a matter of survival. You can't let Lori in the kitchen. She'll tell you that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being mean. She'll tell you that for sure. She can bake, by the way. She really can. But that's why I do all the cooking. I think she probably can, but just hasn't really had good experience with that. It's also not what she does. She has amazing gifts to do other things. I, I like to think I have gifts for other things, but the thing that bugs me about that meme thing, by the way, is I have two university degrees in debt. 
I think it was worth it though. And here's the thing about this story is that it kind of reflects that, how we understand that story kind of reflects that culture of somehow it's a competition. Sometime, somehow we value one of these things more than the other. And those things are represented by the two sisters. Let me ask you to think about this a little bit differently for a second. Think about this story a little differently. Let's think about this story, I, I, and I'm not suggesting that it didn't absolutely 100% happen this way. But think about this story for a minute. Think about the possibility that maybe Jesus made the story up to tell later. And that Mary and Martha aren't, aren't sisters. They're two sides of the same person. And the question isn't which side is more important than the other. The question is when. Because that's a real issue here. It's not a question of whether being a doer or a listener is, is better or worse than the other. It's a question of when you use that skill because you have them all. You have all of those skills. We are all, okay, except between the ages of 12 and 19 maybe, um, we all have the gift of being a doer and a listener. We have different skills, for sure. We have different listening abilities, different abilities to understand. But, but, but the issue isn't whether or not one or the other of those is better. It's in it, the issue is when you use it, being able to discern which one is appropriate in this moment. And that's, that's what the story's about. It's not about, you're doing the right thing generally, Mary. It's about, in this moment, the appropriate thing to be doing here is to be engaging with your guests and being, that's true hospitality. Martha may be thinking, no, no, I'm making the best dinner ever for Jesus. He's going to love it. But, but that's not the hospitality that's needed in the moment. What's needed in the moment is engagement. What's needed in the moment is to sit in listening and engage in conversation and learning. There's a time for doing. You know there's a time for doing. Because you might remember that the story that precedes this story in Luke is the, the man who comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus tells him the story about the Good Samaritan to explain what it means to be a neighbor. And what does it mean to be a neighbor? Does it mean to do nothing and pass on by when someone's in trouble? No, it means to stop and take action. And most importantly, to remember that your neighbor is everyone. That's the, the point of the story. That your neighbor is even those who you think are least likely to be deserving of your attention. That's your neighbor. And what are they getting from you? They're getting an action. Jesus didn't say, go and love one another as I told you. He said, go and love one another as I have loved you. It, 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 it's all about the doing in that moment. But the learning, the learning is a little bit of both, isn't it? In this moment, in this moment, it's about engagement with Jesus rather than what you are able to offer to Jesus. In another moment, it might be all about what you're able to offer. I think, I, 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 the more I think about it, the more I think this, this is such an amazing story because is it really about sisters? Or is it about two sides of the same coin? Is it about you and me? And our, our near constant, and I, I, I know I harp on this a lot, but our, our near constant desire to go either or and not and. It's not just about action. It's not just about doing. It's not just about listening and learning. It's about how we put all of that together. Life with Jesus is about 
all of that together. To love as Jesus showed us to love. In words and action and, and, and. The story that follows this in Luke is Jesus giving the opening words of the Lord's Prayer. That communal prayer that we share together. It's about, it's about, it's about action. It's about learning and listening. It's about prayer. That's, that's the holistic life that, that Jesus calls us to when Jesus says, love one another as I have showed you to love. As I have loved you. Whether Mary and Martha are two different people, uh, they are certainly different characteristics. They are certainly different sides of who we are as people. It's, it's not an either or. 